Over and Under the Snow by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal published by Chronicle Books, LLC. Over the snow I glide into woods frosted fresh and white. Over the snow, a flash of fur, a red squirrel disappears down a crack. Where did he go? Under the snow, Dad says. Under the snow is a whole secret kingdom where the smallest forest animals stay safe and warm. You're skiing over them now. Over the snow I glide past beech trees rattling leftover leaves and strong silent pines that stretch to the sky. On a high branch, a great horned owl keeps watch. Under the snow, a tiny shrew dodges columns of ice. It follows a cool tunnel along the moss out of sight. Look, Dad says, tracks. Tracks always tell a story. Over the snow, a deer has crossed our path. Deep hoof prints punch through the crust up the hill under a tree. An oval of melted snow tells the story of a good night's sleep. Under the snow, deer mice doze. They huddle up, cuddle up against the cold in a nest of feathers and fur. Over the snow I climb, digging in my edges so I don't slide back down. Under the snow, voles scratch through slippery tunnels, searching for morsels from summer feasts. Over the snow I whoosh, down, down, faster, faster, down, faster, faster, whoops! Under the snow, a snowshoe hare watches from a shelter of spruce. Almost invisible, she smooths her fur a coat of winter white. Over the snow I glide, past reeds where tadpoles play tag in springtime. Under the snow, fat bullfrogs doze. They dream of some warmed days back when they had tails. Over the snow I stand and stare, little mountains in the marsh. Under the snow, beavers gnaw on aspen bark settled in for supper. Can they hear my tummy rumbling too? Over the snow, stop, a sound. We stand like statues carved in ice till a bushy-tailed fox steps from a thicket, tips his ears to the ground, listens, listens, listens still, and leaps out onto the snow after an invisible dinner. His paws scratch away to find the mouse he heard scritch, scritch, scratching along underneath, under the snow. Over the snow I glide. A full moon lights my path to supper. Under the snow, a chipmunk waits for a meal. Bedroom, kitchen, hallway, his house under my feet. Over the snow I climb one last hill. Bonfire smoke rises. Warm hands, hot cocoa, hot dogs sizzling on pointed sticks. Under the snow, a black bear snores, still full of October blueberries and trout. Over the snow, the fire crackles and sparks shoot up to the stars. I lick sticky marshmallow from my lips and lean back with heavy eyes. Shadows dance in the flames. Under the snow, a queen bumblebee drowses away December all alone. She'll rule a new colony in spring. Over the snow, I glide home on tired legs. Clouds whisper down feathery soft flakes. Under the covers, I snuggle deep and drift into dreams of cuddling deer mice 
and slumbering frogs, hungry beavers and tunneling voles, drowsy bears and busy squirrels, and the secret kingdom under the snow. Isn't it fun to learn about what's going on underneath the snow in the winter time? It's very wintry and snowy here right now. Today's lesson, we're going to make an art piece that shows what's above the snow, on the snow, as well as below the snow. So here's a list of the materials that you'll need for this project. You will need some white construction paper or light blue um, or any sort of background paper that you have around. Could be watercolor paper. I'm using an old paper bag for the underneath the snow section of my art piece, but you could use any sort of construction paper or even white paper that you watercolor uh, to match the background. You'll also need markers, a Sharpie marker, a black one, or a regular black marker scissors, glue, crayons, and a pencil. Here's a background where I just used some different kinds of paper to create trees and the snow and the underground section of my art piece. So really any sort of materials you have laying around will be great for this project. If you've decided that you don't want to do a background such as this one with different kinds of papers just glued to the back, then I can show you how to make a background with just a pencil and a black marker and some crayons. So let's start with our paper horizontal, side to side, and I'm going to use a Sharpie to draw so that you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to start with the snow drifts where the trees are standing. So we'll do three, one, two, three. Notice they're not in the middle of the paper, they're just slightly below. So kind of eyeball the middle of your paper and then come down a little bit. And that's where we'll start our snow drifts. So here's one, here's another one. And then we'll put this one even a little bit higher over here. And then we'll wanna add a moon because that moon is going to provide light for us to see what's going on in our snowy scene. So I'm just going to draw a circle up here. It's a great big full moon. If you just want to do another moon phase, such as just a sliver or a half moon, that's great too. And then we'll add some wintry trees, which are really just some straight lines and some V's. I'm going to show you how to do a wintry V tree. So there's my kind of wiggly trunk for the first part. And then up here, I'll just make a V. Then you can make another V over here. And you can just continue to fill in the trunk with these V shapes. And don't worry about these lines up against your other lines because we're going to just color this all in black anyway. It's a dark, snowy night, and the trees look dark against that white background. So let's do another one here. Start with the trunk. Come down here and add a V. Then we can add another V. Remember, these don't have to be perfect because it's nature. Nothing in nature is perfect. And down here, the trunks are always a little bit bigger at the bottom. To, not, there's roots down under here, the snow. I'm going to add some smaller branches up here. There would usually be even some smaller twiggy branches here, but we won't take the time to add those for this unless you want to do that later. And then for this third one, I'm going to make it a, a slight uh, bit smaller in order to show that it might be farther away. I'll make this a little bit thinner. Okay, so 
So there's my three trees. And the next step is just to um, color these three trees in with your black marker. You can use uh, watercolor paint. You'd, have, you'd wanna mix it pretty dark. You can use temper paint and do it black, or you can do um, a marker or a crayon would, would work as well. So I'm going to speed the video up and I'm going to finish coloring in these three trees and then I'll meet you back here. Remember that when you're doing these art lessons um, and you need to catch up, just stop the video and then join us when you're finished. So I'll meet you back here when our trees are all colored in. My three trees are all colored in black um, and now I'm going to add the shadows. So the moon is shining um, down upon the snow and the trees are blocking the light. So we wanna think about which way the shadows will go. So this tree, the moon is on this side. So the shadow is kind of just gonna go this direction. And then when I get those two lines drawn, of course we can't do all of the details, I'm just gonna lightly with the side of my crayon, you could use a colored pencil or a regular pencil, um, I'm just gonna make a shadowy um, shape there to show that the tree, the moon is shining behind the tree and the tree is blocking the light. And then for these, it's gonna be a little bit different because they're going the other way. So we'll just go this way for that one. And the same for this one because the moon is on the other side of them. So just gently, don't push too hard because you don't want those shadows to be as dark as the trees themselves. So just almost like whisper coloring, just a very gentle touch. Okay, we'll do that one and then we'll do this one. And then we'll be ready to add um, the background, the sky background. So if you're outside at night, the background is going to be kind of a dark blue. I don't have a dark blue in my crayon box. So I'm just gonna use a regular blue and I'm gonna color in the whole background blue. except I'm not gonna color in the moon. So once again, this will take some time. Take your time. I'm using this side because I can get so much more space covered with just the side than, I, than if I was using the tip. Don't be afraid to take the paper off of your crayon and just use um, the side of your crayon. It goes so much faster. Remember, you want to color around the moon, not on the moon. You want to color all the way around it. So I, I need to slow down so I don't go over the moon. All right, so I'll meet you back here when your background behind your wintry trees is all colored in. Okay, I've got my background all colored in and I'm ready to show the underground part of my art piece. So you could just use a white piece of paper at the bottom of your snow scene, but I'm gonna use this uh, part of a paper bag that I cut up. And you'll notice that I cut it to be the same width as my piece of paper that I'm, color I'm drawing on. But when I look at dirt and nature, things are not straight. So I'm gonna take my scissors and kind of just do um, a wiggly line here to show that the earth underneath, the earth underneath the snow is certainly not straight. It's not what we call linear. All right, and now I'm ready to attach it. And in order for that to happen, I'm gonna put some glue right along the bottom of my paper, right at the bottom of my shadows, actually. 
So I'm just gonna run my glue stick right along the bottom. Nice, heavy line of glue stick. You could use regular glue as well, or you could tape it from the back. And then I'm going to lay this over the top and just press down nice and hard to get that to stay. So now I've got those three places on the snowy winter scene. I've got above the snow, on the snow, and below the snow. And what's missing are the animals and the items that we wanna show in all three of those areas of our snowy picture. So let's think about what we want to put in our picture. For the underground part, I know that there's a tunnel of some sort. So I think I'm gonna take my brown crayon and I'm going to add a tunnel. I'll start over here under this shadowy tree and I'm just gonna do a wiggly line that goes all the way to the bottom and maybe there's a, a den over here where there's an animal that lives. Think about what animals, see how wiggly my line is, would live in an underground tunnel den like this. And you can color it in as well if you want to, it's up to you. And then we'll think about what animal we want to live down here under the ground. I know that often moles and um, rabbits even have underground um, tunnels. They have underground burrows that they, they hide in to stay warm. We know that frogs um, often find a marshy, muddy place to rest and their heartbeat slows down just like so many animals who hibernate. Here's just a few ideas of some animals you might want to add to your wintry background. Um, this is just a fox that I'd already cut out of some orange construction paper. But let's just do a quick how to draw a fox. And this is a, is a, a wintry snow rabbit that turns white, um, snowshoe hair in the winter time to camouflage and blend in with the snow. And then this is, of course, this is a little squirrel. Now, if you want to just go find a how to draw animal video or you have a book, that would be a great way to add animals to your picture. Um, or if you wanna just draw your own animals. Um, I was thinking I would like to put an owl in my picture somewhere up in the tree because we know that the owls are above the snow. I'd like to put this snowshoe hair somewhere in my picture. And so let's just do a little bit of drawing. When you're drawing on one side of the paper, you can always cut it out and turn it over and add the details. And that's what I did on this fox on the orange paper. I did a lot of drawing on one side, as you can see, and then I turned it over and added some details. Same thing with this little hair. So let's start with the fox. So the fox is just um, a shape of, the, the body is just an oval shape. We've drawn faces before. So the body is essentially just an oval shape. From the oval shape, I can add the tail. We know that foxes have nice pointy tails. And then if you want to go over here and add the head, remember we can start with an oval and then we can add the snout and then the ears. Remember, we're gonna cut this, turn it over and we'll have a different shape. So we know that we can just put these, this, these two shapes together to make the neck. And then for the legs, we know we can see one leg on this side. There's the hoof. And then just behind it, I just like to do another one. And then the same on this side. Don't worry about being perfect. All right, now you'll see that when I cut this out, it'll be a great shape for a fox. 
Um, and then the same for this no-shoe hair. Look, it's just really just a little oval. Add a little bump for the face or the snout. Add a couple of little ears and maybe a little tail. And then this is a squirrel. Squirrels can be challenging, but let's see how we do here. We've got the shape of the body. We've got the tail, which is, I'm gonna make it go even above the body. Let's add the little face. We'll add a little snout. Oops, that looks like a bird. We'll add a couple of little ears on this side. And then maybe a little arm or paw on this side. Oops, need to add a leg. Now, I'm gonna start with this fox, and I'm just gonna cut it out and turn it over and show you how you can, you've got this great shape. Now, if you've got construction paper and you wanna just draw these on a different color, that's even better, and then all you have to do is just add some details. Where I'll probably have to color in this fox. All right, so when I turn it over, look at that. Maybe I've got an Arctic fox, and I can just leave him white and give him a little eye right here and his nose, maybe some details on his ears, maybe some details on his hoofs. And of course those foxes have that, that little, so I could just leave it as an Arctic fox. So do the same with um, the bunny and your squirrel and color them in if you need to. I just added a little bit of pink to the bunny's ears and an eye. And um, then we'll talk about where to put them on your um, on your your um, picture. Okay, I am ready to finish my above, on, and below the snow scene. So I've got my white fox, my my Arctic fox. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on him and put him on the snow. I've got my snowshoe hair who actually needs to hide from these two other foxes. Um, he's also on the snow. Maybe he's hiding in the shadow here. And then I've got my red fox. You probably wouldn't see an Arctic fox and a red fox in the same place, but that's okay. So I'll put him up here over here. And the squirrel is gonna be my choice for above the snow up here in the tree. I have squirrels in my yard and they have nests up in the trees in the winter time. They have their babies um, and they come down to eat every once in a while. I've glued a few dry wintry leaves here and then I forgot that I had printed out some animals and I, I had a vole, which is like a fat mouse or even a little bit like a mole, a little bit, maybe the size, more size of a rat. And so I just cut that out, which you can do too. If you've got something, you find something online and, and you've got it grown up to help you print it, you can just print out anything you want. The other thing that you, and cut it out and then glue it to your picture. The other thing that you can do is you can draw right on to your wintry scene. So you can add, um, you can add a, a little swampy, muddy place for a toad or a frog that might be hibernating down here on the bottom. So there's just so many possibilities. And your wintry scene won't look like anybody else's, remember. They all will look different depending on what kinds of animals and items you want to add to it. So thanks for joining us for this lesson. This was really fun. You can send us your um, projects at the Instagram account and the Gmail account that I add at the end of this video. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.